Welcome to the driving event of the brand new Mercedes-Benz A-Class. We're here at Croatia. It's a wonderful, beautiful place. We have the sea, we have the sun, everything is perfect, but there's one thing that we don't like so much. Croatia is a place where loads of new people come to make holiday. And as you hear, they're building houses everywhere. You can hear a jackhammer, or if you hear a big lorry, you don't have to mind. It's just the way it is at the moment. But now let's talk about the new A-Class. We talked about the design of that car at the world premiere already. So now we just have a short overview about the most important changes. So let's start with the design at the front of the car. The first thing that you get to know when you look at it is it looks a lot similar to the new CLS because we have this new front here. It's the same with the CLS. We have this very sharp, very thin new headlights and this car here now features the multi-beam LED headlights as well. And we do have the new grille where you can see it's not only that part, it's also the part down here. And it looks a bit open to the uh, bottom. So that makes the car look a lot more solid on the road. And then what you see is the bonnet. The bonnet is very, very steep and very low, very cl close to the road. So that gives the car an impression from the front. that looks a lot more dynamic, a lot more sporty and aggressive than its predecessor. Overall, the new A-Class is 12 centimeters longer than its predecessor. Now it's 4 meters 41 long. And on top, they increased the wheelbase by 3 centimeters as well. When you look at the front, I think that bonnet is really very long. And if you look from the side to the whole car, I think it looks a bit too long. But on the other hand, it looks perfect from the front. And when you then look here, you have this quite flat front window. We have a standard, standard roof line and that ends here with that nice spoiler. But more important when you look from the side to the car is they reduced the lines. So that makes the side of the car a lot more clean and as I think, a lot more modern as well. Looking at the rear of the car, we see what we saw at the side. We have a reduction of lines. The whole rear of the car looks a lot more clean and I think a lot more fresh as well. But the most important change here is of course, we have splitted taillights. And behind that is a very important information because now the boot lid is 20 centimeters wider than with a predecessor. And that makes loading and unloading a lot more easy now. The A-Class offers 370 liters of boot volume with the rear seats up and a maximum of 1,210 liters when folded down. This is matching the size offered by the competitors. The Audi A3 Sportback comes with 380 up to 1,220 liters. And the BMW 1 Series offers between 360 and 1,200 liters of boot capacity. My test car features the 1.5 liter four in the inline diesel, and that offers 116 horsepower and 260 newton meters of torque. Um, that doesn't sound that much, but I have to say, when you drive the car, especially on countryside roads while starting or inside of a city, the car feels more powerful than it is. Maybe that's because of the combination with the seven-speed automatic gearbox. Uh, the only point where you can feel that the car may should offer a bit more power is when you drive a bit more quicker, a bit more sporty or with higher refs. But I have to say, on the other hand, our car only took 5.3 liters per 100 kilometer driven diesel. And I think that's a very nice number. So I think if you see that together, it works absolutely well. One of the highlights of the new A-Class is the so-called MBUX infotainment system. And next to me is Marco Santi. He's part of the development team of exactly that feature. So Marco, what does that mean, MBUX, and what are the highlights of the system? So MBUX means Mercedes-Benz user experience, and it's everything to do with the customer interacts with the car, inside the car and outside the car. So to start with, one of the, our main features are, for instance, it looks awesome. When you have the widescreen cockpit that you saw on the car, you know, it's just brilliant graphics. It is very easy to use. We have a touch. Uh, screen now in the car so you can touch it. Um, we have our steering control pads uh, on the steering wheel and um, also you can interact with the system now with natural speech. But that's not all. Of course the system can be updated over the air. That's made 
possible through to a great connectivity that the car has and it learns intelligently over the time. Um, a question, if I, if I buy one A-Class and I, I don't want to have these big screens because it's extra cash, mm -hmm. how about if I'm using the smaller ones? That's also part of MGX. Um, in Germany, for instance, it starts once you get a navigation. In other market, it starts with a, a two seven-inch screens, for instance. Um, with other um, uh, car companies, I saw that they, when they offer things like this, like connectivity, they also offer something like an app. And do you have something like it and some some extras on it? Oh yeah, we have an app. Just one example. We have an app where you can do a car sharing now. So. For instance, uh, if you like the new A class and I have one and you want to borrow it, we could do it via that app, uh, do a car sharing now. And um, if you don't have the key, for instance, we can use another technology, which is um, you can just uh, open the car with this car with this card. It's an NFC chip, so some cell phones have that, or you just get the card and then um, open the, the car. Um, you just said that one of the highlights is that I can use natural speed, yeah. uh, speech. Sorry. Um, does that mean I can use slang as well? I would understand that. And, and is there any command I have to use to use it? So you don't have to know all the commands anymore as we did in the past. So and we are also very fond of that. We are kind of okay with um, with uh, with accents, for instance. You know, me being a German, I could talk to the uh, system still in English and it will understand me. So that's working, yes. And also when we talk about natural language understanding, it's like you and me talking to each other. I could even say, hey, Mercedes, I feel cold and it will raise the temperature for you. So it's indirect speech that's working now. So for us means, that means, a lot more easy to work with and of course a lot more safe. So now I turned the radio and the infotainment on to check out how this uh, new system works with the voice control. I will show it to you. Hey Mercedes. How can I help you? I'm hungry. So as you see, it instantly shows me the next uh, oncoming restaurants on my way. So that works perfectly. We try another thing. The Mercedes engineers explained to me that the system only works with everything that is connected to cars. So what we want to try now, how does it work if I ask her something really special? Hey Mercedes. How can I help you? What do you think about VW? So that was a rude answer. Um, last time she said uh, to me that she likes them a lot because she can see them in her rearview mirror. When the new A-Class will hit the market, Mercedes will only offer three different engines for that car, and these are two petrol, one diesel. It starts with the smallest petrol engine. That is a 1.4-liter four-cylinder uh, in line, um, and this will only offer 163 horsepower. If you want more, you can choose the two-liter petrol engine. This is a four-cylinder as well, and that will offer 224. And then there is the diesel engine, which is the car we're driving. It's a 1.5 liter four cylinder inline engine and that offers 116 horsepower. Very important is only for the smallest petrol you can choose a six speed manual gearbox. All other cars will come automatically with a seven speed automatic gearbox. But for me, the most important news is there will be an AMG version for that car available quite soon. And this is really the engine I'm looking forward to. Talking about the interior of our new Mercedes-Benz A-Class, I really have to say it feels very nice. And of course, the real eye-catcher here are these two big screens at the front. We have to say they offer you, on one hand, loads of information, very nice, very crisp. You can really configure them the way you want. You have a million of options. You have, of course, for the first time, a touch screen, which I really like a lot. And so that really is a feature that I would definitely buy when I buy an A-Class. Um, regarding to the size, to the space in the car, I have to say I sit very comfortably here at the front seat. Um, I have not so much headspace but more than enough and very important this car of, uh, has a sunroof mounted and even though I have enough space but that is because you see that pillar here that is aside my hat so that gives me extra space which is nothing that you have in every car. 
Um, so this car works even for tall persons when you buy the sunroof as well. Um, regarding to the materials, I don't think we, don't have, we have to talk a lot about it because that's a typical Mercedes thing. Um, it really is the way a Mercedes should look like. Um, regarding to the seats, I have to say, my seats are really comfortable. I absolutely love the way you can um, uh, change the position of the headrest, which really is absolutely great. Uh, but I would love to have a bit more support to the sides. But some of my colleagues, they do have sports seats mounted in their test cars, and they told me that they offer a lot more of support. But they say, on the other hand, they are not as comfortable as this one here. Next to me is Jan Gleitzmann from Ausfahrt TV, one of my colleagues. Um, Jan, we do have different engines on board, but before we talk about the engine of the car, um, what is your idea, what do you think about the new A-Class? Well, I think they did a really good job. Uh, from the pr prior generation to this one, it's really a big step. As they talk about evolution uh, outside, revolution inside, and especially the inside, it's more comfortable. You have better materials all over. You have the MBOX uh, infotainment system, which is really easy to use and fun to use as well. And it helps you. I mean, if I can talk to the car, hey, Mercedes, I'm cold and it turns on the heating. That's what I want. Um, and what about the drive of the car? What about the suspension and how does it feel on the road? Well, I have the adaptive uh, suspension here and I'm really pleased about the spreading between comfort and sport. It's really notable. You know, a lot of cars we drive, um, they, they give us uh, an adaptive suspension and you don't really feel the difference. Uh, here we have a difference, especially on the roads uh, uh, here in Croatia, Croatia that are not so good. Uh, you feel a difference. It's very comfortable on comfort and if you put it in sport, you really feel all the dents. Okay, so then let's talk about the engine. So I have the small diesel engine on board, which what I think really is a very nice engine. It works well and my consumption with that car was only 5.3 liters per 100 kilometer driven yesterday and I drove in the city and on the countryside. But that's it. But you have the most powerful one on board. What about your car? How thirsty is that one? Well, I'm driving the A250, which is a two liter um, inline four cylinder uh, engine with 224 horsepower. And um, I ended up with a fuel consumption of, of 10 liters, which is due to my driving uh, here in Croatia. They have a lot of uh, windy uh, country roads um, and uh, up and down the hills, which was fun to drive. Um, and so I think I had a little bit uh, more fuel uh, running in the engine. Uh, but I think if you buy this engine, you have to think about at least eight to nine liters, rather nine than, than eight, I guess. But the driving itself was fun. Okay. Suspension great, steering great, uh, the engine has enough power. But of course, you know, people like you and me, we wait for the AMG version. Of course. Uh, very important to know is um, when we drive with our cars while filming, we have to stop very often. We have to, to push the car a bit more hard so that it's the consumption is nothing you can say as somebody will reach by, by normal driving. But for me, I did a standard drive yesterday, which was great. But for you, I think, as you said, uh, we drive different to standard customers. Uh, is there anything else you think, maybe about pricing, or do you, do you think that car is value for money? Well, um, you know, car journalists like you and me, the price is just like a number, like the weight. So I can't really make up my mind if the car is worth 60,000 euros. I configured it online and I came up with uh, almost uh, 61,000 euros. Um, I think it's a really beautiful car. It is, uh, has nice materials. This is like almost all options in. So, well, I really wait for the AMG version. There will be a lighter AMG version, uh, so uh, then we can talk again. But I, if I would buy a car, which I don't have to as a car journalist, this would be on my bucket list for sure. So as you see, if you want everything from Mercedes, it got a sticker price on it, but I think it's worth it. As Jan mentioned already, the A-Class is not a bargain. 
The base model starts at 31,398 euros in Germany. These are about 8,500 euros more compared to a similar powered Golf. But if you then look at the BMW 1 with a 116 horsepower diesel, it ends up by just a plus of 2,200 euros. And actually, the A Class comes as standard with an automatic gearbox. That was our test drive with a brand new Mercedes Benz A Class here from Croatia. And I think it's a good time to think about what do I like and what do I not like. And the first thing that I really think when you look at the exterior is this new front design of the A-Class. I really have to say I love this so-called Predator face. I really think that makes the car more aggressive, more stylish, and I really think young people will absolutely like it. If you then talk about the rest of the car, Mercedes says exterior, evolution, interior, revolution. I think that is really what they did with the car. The interior is completely new and fresh. The materials are absolutely great. And I think more important is the new system called MBUX. That infotainment system with the new voice control really gives you a car that you can easily operate only by using your voice. Something I really like. The rest of the interior is nice as well. And then you look at these big screens. This is something you normally find at the middle or upper middle class, not in a compact car. But of course, that car does have its price. But I think if you want to have a small car and you don't want to say, I can't take that, I can't take that. If you really want the whole package in a small package, I think this is the car you really have a closer look at.